Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about new observations and very interesting discoveries coming from the bright star known as Antares. Today I wanted to talk about how apparently the size of Antares is much much larger than we initially estimated and it also helps us understand how our sun will transform in the future and how a lot of these stars similar to Betelgeuse progress through their lifetimes. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odemai. Earlier this year, there were a lot of mysteries with Betelgeuse that made it one of the more popular and most uh, talked about red giants ever. Some people expected Betelgeuse to explode because of its unusual dimming, but today we know that this was just a fluke and it's actually back to normal now. However, we still have a lot of questions about these mysterious red giants, and more importantly, we want to understand how they progress through their lifetimes and what's going to happen to them in the next few thousands or millions of years. One of the reasons is, of course, because our own sun will also one day change into these large, very unusual stars. And even though, unlike these stars, our sun is not going to go supernova, by studying these unusual stars, we can still learn a lot about our sun as well. So first of all, what exactly is Antares? Well, it's one of the brighter stars out there. As a matter of fact, it's 15th most bright star, and even though it is a variable star decreasing and increasing in brightness quite a lot, for the most part, it's very, very easy to see in the night skies, even in relatively light polluted areas. This star is also often referred to as the heart of the Scorpion because of its location in the constellation of Scorpio. It's a really, really large evolved uh, red star giant similar to Betelgeuse, slightly smaller than Betelgeuse. And the initial estimates put its radius at around 700 times the radius of our own sun. Just to give you a visual comparison, if this is our own solar system, with the orbits of the planet and Earth visible right here, if we were to place Antares in the middle, it would basically cover pretty much most of the planets, most of the terrestrial planets, and would almost reach the orbit of Jupiter. Now obviously this is a little bit of a simplified version of this, because these stars, like I mentioned in the previous video, are not necessarily spherical as we imagine them to be um, based on our own Sun. They're more or less um, irregular in shape and do appear more like clouds of plasma, with some parts of the star being much larger than other parts, and also big varieties of density and temperature on the inside as well. And because its mass is about 12 masses of the Sun, we believe that it's going to go supernova at some point and very likely end up producing a neutron star, which could become a magnetar or a pulsar, and would probably leave a very beautiful supernova behind. Here we can try to simulate all of this to see what this might look like in the next few 10,000 years or so. We believe that it's going to go supernova within the next 10,000 years, and we think that it's currently about 11 million years old. So basically it's a really, really young star, but because it's so massive, and because it's also so large and so massive, we think that it has about 10,000 years left in it. At a distance of about 550 light years away from Earth, it's also one of the closer giants like uh, Betelgeuse, and it's even closer than Betelgeuse. But this star is not alone, it does have a partner. Its partner, known as Antares B, is a very very bright B-type star, has a mass of about 10 masses of the Sun, and is also extremely bright and extremely powerful. So this is a very unusual duo of stars, with one of the stars eventually going supernova, and the fate of this one is currently not really known but it's probably going to go supernova at some point as well. Interestingly, when it does go supernova, its brightness will be equivalent to a full moon um, in the night skies, and this will last for at least a couple of weeks or so. We're probably not going to be around to see it, but if we are, it's going to be a very interesting event. But because this is a large star, and also because this is a very interesting star, and also potentially one of the next nearby supernova to us, the scientists are always interested in studying Antares. The most recent study is this right here, and it actually used two very different telescopes. The ALMA telescope that you see right here was able to investigate shorter wavelengths of about a few millimeters to try to detect certain parts of the star that we are unable to detect using visual light. Yet the so-called very large array was able to see longer wavelengths of about a few centimeters, 
to try to see other parts that are invisible to visual light, optical telescopes, and of course, uh, previously mentioned ALMA. In other words, they looked at the star in different uh, wavelengths to try to determine the structure that was previously invisible to us and to try to discover more about the mysterious chromosphere that we know very, very little about, even though we can see it around our own sun. Interestingly, chromosphere, for our own sun at least, is this ridiculously small, very, very thin area right around the solar surface. If we were to try to analyze the structure of our sun, or at least the other structure, in a nutshell, the visible part right here is known as the photosphere. That's essentially the visible surface of the sun that we are all familiar with. But on top of the photosphere, there's another very thin layer known as the chromosphere. That's the layer we know so little about because it represents only one two hundredth or about half a percent of the entire radius of our own sun. But we know that it's actually hotter than the photosphere. It's about 20,000 degrees Kelvin, whereas the surface of the sun, the photosphere, is only about 5,000 degrees Kelvin. So it's about four times hotter. And this layer is right below the very famous layer known as the solar corona, that's a few million degrees Kelvin. The solar corona is much easier to see, it's also a lot easier to study, so most of the modern solar studies actually focus on the corona itself, because it does have quite a lot of mysteries about it as well. But the chromosphere we know very, very little about. And we also don't really know what effects it has on the sun, and how it evolves with time as sun gets older. For these reasons, the scientists behind this paper decided to take a look at the nearest large evolved star to us, which is of course Antares, and to try to study the chromosphere of the star. To their surprise, the chromosphere of Antares was ridiculously large. It essentially makes the star about 12 times bigger than we initially thought, with the actual radius right here, as you can see, extending way, way past the orbit of Saturn and even approaching the orbit of Uranus. Which of course technically makes this star one of the largest, if not the largest stars we've ever discovered, but at the same time this is only simply on the observations of Antares. We can now assume that all these large red giants have a very similar structure with chromosphere expanding way past where it would be around our sun. So even though for our own sun it represents only about one two hundredth of the radius, here it's about two and a half times the radius of the star itself. With the chromosphere itself being divided into several areas, with the last area here representing what the scientists refer to as wind acceleration zone. So in other words, as these stars evolve and change with time, they do seem to actually change their structures and transform from a typical star shape that they were familiar with, which is of course the solar shape, the sun that we're all familiar with, to something entirely different with some areas expanding a lot more than others, and the structure that we kind of took for granted being entirely different. So this particular illustration no longer explains the structure of these large giants. They do seem to have something completely different going on, and they obviously have very different activity compared to our own sun. And this has so far been the most accurate radio map of any star in the universe except for our own sun. This is actually a really important study in helping us understand how stars evolve and what happens to these large giants, and it's very likely that this is going to be used with other stars as well because there seem to be a lot more questions here than answers right now. I guess the biggest discovery here, of course, is that the atmosphere of these stars, the so-called chromosphere and uh, very likely corona, extend way, way past where we thought they would end, making these stars envelop the entire star system completely. So basically, even though in the original simulation here I showed you that the Antares would extend this far, in reality, it would envelop a much larger area and would have effects over really, really huge amounts of space. And this is probably true of what's going to happen to our sun as well. As it expands and as it turns into a red giant in a few billion years from now, its chromosphere and also its corona will also expand and very likely envelop other planets we did not really think would be affected by all of this. So now we kind of have to maybe rework the simulations that we created previously, because there's a very high chance the solar system will also transform very dramatically when the sun does become a supergiant. But because we know so little about chromosphere and about the activity above the solar surface, above the solar photosphere, this actually allows us to understand the activity a lot better. 
main discovery here, for example, is that the temperature here is still really, really high. So the chromosphere itself is able to maintain high temperatures and also seems to have a kind of a bubbly motion going on, very similar to the bubbles inside the typical boiling water pot. So here the activity becomes very hard to predict and also um, extremely, extremely dynamic compared to what we see around our own sun. Currently, we can't really explain why the temperature is so high, but it very likely has something to do with uh, the interaction with the magnetic field of the star, which would also suggest that the Antares and other red giants are also extremely magnetically active. And even though the star itself seems to cover such large volumes of space, the temperature in the chromosphere still remains surprisingly high. Around our sun, the chromosphere is only about 20,000 degrees, but it also covers very, very small area. Whereas the temperatures around Antares are about 3500 degrees Celsius or 6400 degrees Fahrenheit, but they extend to the really, really far regions of space. And that's very difficult to explain right now. To produce these temperatures, a lot of energy is required, and we currently cannot explain how the star manages to do all of this. And interestingly, in this particular observation, the scientists were even able to observe the interactions of this very, very unusual wind that's coming from the star with its partner Antares B. And in this case, you can actually see it very easily in a paper with the Antares A, the main star, throwing out its winds and then having these interactions with its partner B right here, which is something that scientists didn't really think would be visible so easily. These interactions are also very important because it allows us to understand how these tremendously large stars also help the neighborhood evolve as well. Very recently we discovered that these large stars are actually really good at preventing other stars from forming planets, for example. So in other words, their winds are so strong that they can actually break apart the protoplanetary disks around other stars in the vicinity. And this is obviously not very good news for the maintenance of planets nearby. So if there are any planets here, they are probably going to be extremely low in habitability. But that's of course something we're going to talk about in some of the future videos. For now, it's a very exciting study, it's definitely really cool to see the star in all of its glory, and it's really interesting that the chromosphere is so unusual compared to what we thought it was going to be. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, we'll come back and talk about this in some of the future videos once we discover more about Antares or about these unusual giants. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.